Hey, Honest Physics. Uh, this is the second video for this week's lesson. And I'm going to play around a little bit in a circuit building simulation. Uh, this is from a website called PET, P-H-E-T. That's a lot of science simulations. And there's a link to this um, in a posting for this week. Um, I'm going to basically just play around with it a little bit to show you how uh, the parts work, and I'm going to illustrate some of the key ideas from this week's material about resistors in series and in parallel, and how the uh, how they how the com combination of resistors um, affects the total resistance. I'm also kind of winging it, as you can tell from my stammering there. So over on the left. Um, there's a selection of objects that you can drag into the circuit. There's multiple panels of this, uh, but I'm going to stick with the boring stuff. So I'm going to begin by just making a really basic circuit to get it to flow, so you can see that. The wires you can uh, stretch out however you want. They always come in straight line segments. Yeah, I think it's a little bit easier to look at um, if I make a rectangle, but you don't have to make a rectangle. So notice that as soon as the as soon as there was a complete circuit, a complete pathway, uh, the current started to flow. The visualization you're seeing right now is the electrons moving through the wires, um, which is why they are going opposite the direction of the current. You may remember this distinction between the electron motion and the conventional current. Um, so the electrons are coming out of the negative terminal or the battery, going around and entering on the positive terminal. There are options over here, and if you switch to the conventional current, then goes the direction that we normally talk about um, for current to flow. So it comes out of the positive side, and in this case, it's going this way. Um, turn off <coughs> that indicator for a second. There are two different uh, models of ammeter for measuring current here. This one is kind of magical. Um, you could argue that it's maybe using magnetism to sense the current. But basically, if you hover this little reticle over different parts of the circuit, it'll tell you how much current there is there. Notice that I'm getting the same reading everywhere. And that's because this is just a single loop circuit. Everything's in series. And in a single loop circuit, you have the same amount of current everywhere. Um, so this is not a realistic way of measuring currents, but it's very handy in the simulation. In, a, in the real world, if you want to measure current, you have to insert the meter in series uh, with the rest of your stuff. So if you click on any intersection, you get this little scissors, and that allows you to break up the intersections. I'm going to put meter in series. And now you can see I'm measuring the same 0.9 here of current. Um, so again, this kind of meter is more realistic, but uh, the magic meter is a lot more handy. So I'm going to focus on that. You can also also measure voltages. Um, the voltmeter works just like the multimeters that we use for measuring voltages in class. So the black probe and the red probe go in two different places on the circuit. And then the meter tells you the potential difference between them. So when I've got them there and there, I'm reading 9 volts. And amazingly enough, that's because it's a 9 volt battery. I know it looks like a double A, so it should really be one and a half volts, but the default value is nine. 
no matter where I take the probe in this section, I'm still getting a reading of 9. Because all I'm doing is moving it around on the wire, and the wires have extremely small resistance. Um, and so there's almost no voltage change as you go along there. But if I put the probe over here, now I get a reading of 0. Because the only thing in between the two probes is wire. And wire has really low resistance, so there's very little change in potential. I get that 9 volt reading. The probes are really close to the resistor. Or if they're really close to the battery. Doesn't matter. Because again, anywhere along the wire, it's pretty much the same potential. Alright, so that's the basic idea of how you can use the parts. What I want to do is illustrate some stuff about um, series and parallel resistances. So I've got, where do I want to put that? I've got this 0.9 amp current going based on the setup that I have right now. And what I'm going to do is take a second resistor, and I'm going to put this resistor in series with the first one. So immediately you can see that arrows are moving slower now. The reading on the current has gone down. That's because I increased the total resistance of the circuit. By putting these in series, I increased the resistance, that decreased the current. <clears throat> On the other hand, if I make this extra resistor be connected in parallel, Notice that it's not doing anything yet. In fact, I'm going to make that even more dramatic. So it's not doing anything yet because there's no current going down into this dead end. But as soon as I connect this here, it's not going to be a dead end anymore. And what I'm going to be doing is providing a second pathway, parallel pathway, And in making that connection, I have now reduced the resistance of the circuit as a whole. You can see that the arrows are moving faster, at least in this section, moving faster. Current reading has gone up to 1.8, so I doubled the current, even though I added a resistor. And what you can see is that these fast arrows, once they reach the intersection, they split. Every other arrow goes this way, every other one goes this way. And their speed through the resistors is slower. But then when they come back together again, they speed up. If I were to add more resistors in parallel, it's the same thing. Every time you get an extra pathway, it makes it easier for current to flow through the circuit, because there are more ways for it to go. Now currently I have all three resistors set to be the same amount, they're all 10 ohms. And so the current through each one of them, 0.9 amps, 0.9 amps. 0.9 amps. And you may recall, 0.9 amps was also the current when there was only one resistor. And that's because 9 volts divided by 10 ohms gives you 0.9 amps. That's that V equals IR formula again. The potential difference for each of these resistors is 9 volts. Right? 9 volts between here and here. 9 volts between there and there, 9 volts between there and there, 9 
I pulse between there and there, and I pulse between there and there. Because all I did just now was move the probes around on the wire. But as I said a few times already, the wires themselves have a very low resistance, and so there's almost no change in potential when you go from one place to another on a wire. So the potential difference for each one of these is 9 volts. And that means each one of them has 0.9 amps of current flowing through it. All right, well, what if I change the resistance? I'm going to select this resistor, it brings up a little box, and I can make the resistance whatever I want it to be. So let's go up to like 100 ohms. Notice that the colored bands changed. Brown is 1, black is 0. So this is 1, 0, 0, extra zeros. <laughs> this is 1, 0 with 1 extra 0, 100. So when I increase this resistance, the current changed. The current is not 2.7 anymore. The current through the top resistor is still 0.9. Current through the bottom resistor is still 0.9. What is the current in the middle resistor going to be? It has a potential difference of 9 volts, just like before. Yep, 9 volts. But the resistance is 100. So 9 divided by 100 would be 0.09. Current of that resistor should be 0.09, and it is. So if I got 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and 0 0.09, that adds up to this total current of 1.89. 1.89 amps come out of battery. Tiny amount of that goes through this middle pathway, which is really hard to get through. And the rest splits evenly between these two easier pathways. So again, if I were to add more and more parallel connections, the current produced by the battery would just go up and up and up, because I make it easier and easier for current to flow when I widen the hallway by providing more paths. But putting them in series does the opposite. circuit's looking a little janky now, but I'm not going to worry about it. So they're all in series now. The current is looking really darn slow. That's because this resistor is still at set at 100 ohms. So the total resistance of the circuit now, since these are in series with each other, I can just add the numbers. So the total resistance is 120. 9 volts divided by 120, I don't want to do that in my head, the calculator says 0 0.075 amps. Is that what we got? That's all we got. I need another digit. <clears throat> if I put this back down to 10 ohms, the current's going to increase. Now, it's still not as fast as it was before, because the resistance of the circuit Overall, is 30 ohms as opposed to the 10 that we started with. So there's three times as much resistance as at the beginning, and the current is one third of what it used to be. So there's all kinds of proportionalities in all of the different parts um, when you're analyzing resistors and currents and voltages. Now, unfortunately, the simulation doesn't have a quick way of directly measuring the resistance. Um, like there's not a resistance meter that I can just connect to them so you can see, oh, it's 30 ohms. Um, but I'm going to put them back in parallel again one more time. If I had planned this out, I would have 
done all my parallel stuff at once. So I'm going back and forth, but whatever. Get them all in parallel again. <clears throat> all right, again, the current coming out of the battery right now is 2.7 amps. So if the potential difference across the whole circuit is 9 volts, and the current's 2.7, that means that the resistance, I should be able to calculate using the definition of resistance, V over I, so 9 divided by 2.7, that gives me a resistance of 3.333. And that is the same thing that you would get if you did the funny reciprocal addition for these three tens. I have to do 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 10. That is 3 tenths. And then you take the reciprocal again. So it's 10 over 3. 10 over 3 is 3.33333. <clears throat> so again, putting them in parallel reduces the resistance. Putting them in series increases the resistance. Um, so in your assignment this week, there's not uh, there's not a requirement for you to do anything in this simulation, although there will be in the future. Um, but you may find it useful to play around with. You can even use it to simulate some of the questions in the homework. Um, and hopefully that will help you to understand what's going on in those questions. All right, that's it.